Um, and the basic argument running through it is to try to show you um, some examples of projected moving image art that you don't usually see in, in the gallery. Because for the last 10 years, to I think everyone's surprise, <clears throat> projection has hit the art gallery scene like never before. And in the mid-90s, when it first uh, kind of emerged as a, what appeared to be a new direction, it was greeted as a wholly new phenomenon, as if people had never projected film in art galleries previously, and of course they, they had. And what I want to show in part tonight is, is some aspects of that other tradition uh, um, uh, of uh, projected moving art in gallery context. Now, some of the things that I'm going to say about the gallery, um, I hope may provoke some discussion after about 35 or 40 minutes of, of, of looking at stuff, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, try to show that there's an alternative and very different way of looking at um, artists' projected gallery-based work. A lot of what we see now is very iconic, very imagistic, very emotive. It um, often deals with uh, bringing very different cultures into the, the Western space of the gallery. Um, I suppose the key names are Douglas Gordon, uh, Steve McQueen, Tassel Dean, um, Mark Lewis. Um, I'm going to try and show you work that is definitely not by them. Uh, and just to make the point even more offensively, um, uh, this is a quote from um, an interview with Peter Chikassi. It's uh, from an uh, Anglo-French uh, journal called Balthazar, Spring 2002. And here's the question. <clears throat> and what do you think of the work of people like Douglas Gordon, for example? And Peter Chikassi says, what you can tell from those works in the first place is the total ignorance of the fine arts community towards avant-garde filmmaking. Because what Douglas Gordon and Stan Douglas are doing really was done before, and it was done, in most of the cases, much more compelling by the avant-garde. And everybody says, oh, how wonderful, what a revelation. This is simply unfair, but that's the way it is. And it's our business to point out that problem with the general discourse about recent media art. And the point he's making is, is, is really the, the drift of this evening, that um, starting way back, and you can trace it to the 20s and more recently from the 70s, there have been people showing uh, expanded video and film projection um, in non-cinema contexts, let's say contexts that don't have much to do with, with narrative or drama. Um, and that's a history that's largely been forgotten, and I'm going to make a few pointers, I hope, to its resurrection this evening. So, see, this is a three-screen work, um, and the three screens are showing uh, looped, reprinted uh, material of three kinds. There are colour fields, just pure colour uh, frames. We're going to see a fair bit of that this evening. There is a somewhat mysterious shot of customs officers, um, kind of armed police at a border post somewhere uh, in Europe, and there's a target. And these three elements interact on three screens, and then, um, if you were able to see this from where you're sitting, the projectors are moved during the projection so that the images start to overlap. They were all originally black and white, and color was added with filters and color stock in a fairly primitive um, um, printer and processor at the London Filmmakers Cooperative in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And what Jill Everly did was this. She, um, uh, she's working in a totally dark room. The camera shutter, for people who remember cameras before digital, is held wide open, and she's drawing in the dark around the objects that she can only actually sense or remember are in the room. Uh, there's a chair, there's a table, there's something on the wall, and then she draws around her own body. Now what she draws with is a pencil torch. Okay, she has a thin beam of light, so she's in the dark, the camera shutter is wide open so that it's taking a long exposure, and she's tracing the shapes of objects in the dark, both herself and space around her. And that gives rise to these, these dancing images, which are then looped in different sequences on the three projectors, and they've been colored 
uh, with the same equipment as Le Grice was using for the work that you've just seen in the, in the old London Filmmakers Cooperative. Um.